Hello, my brothers and sisters. We will be doing the ninth part, and it's, which is a continuation of part eight. So this is the ninth part. And just to sum up what we were talking about last time, we were talking about Noah and the flood and being the covenant. God made a covenant with him that he would never destroy the earth again. But he said that the next time he destroyed it, it would be with fire. So we're going to talk about the fire part this time. How it would be destroyed by fire the next time. And what the consequences of that will be. And what we have to do to prepare ourselves for it. And um, let me begin reading with, it says, God will open. No, God will once again destroy the earth. And a judgment of sin with fire. Still going to be the same problem. It's going to be people who don't want to do right. It's going to be so much sin on the earth. God going to destroy it with fire this time. The same as he did when, in Noah's day when people didn't want to do right. And those giants were called Nephilim also that was in the Old Testament. And what happened is when Satan in the garden, when Satan knew there was going to be enmity between him and the woman, Satan was going to do everything he could to stop, stop the seed of woman. Get them to do his bidding. Living like him. Living the way he wanted them to live instead of God's Holy Spirit living on earth. And he was going to do everything in his power to stop the baby Jesus from coming. That's why those giants were there. Even after the flood, the giants still were in Canaan land. And um, matter of fact, uh, the, Can the, the, Can the uh, ham which was one of Noah's sons. Uh, the Canaanites came through Ham. That was his generation. And so those were the ones that were sinning so much. And um, when Joseph went down to, when Moses told him to go down and, 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 and espy out the land and see who was on it and what was on it, they went down, the spies of, of, of Moses went down and looked, and Joshua was one of them, and all of them came back and told them that there was giants in the land. And those were where those uh, giants that came from, whether it came from one of the wives that, 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 that um, Ham was married to. We don't know if she was one of the daughters of one of the Nephrims, or whatever it could have been anyway that bloodline still came down through there of uh, that bad fruit. So, but getting back to the fire, we're going to talk about that. And um, then it says Revelation 29. No, no. First it's found in uh, 2 Peter 3, 10 and 11. Then Revelations 20 and Nine, and also Revelation 21 and 1. On that day of the Lord, but there is a way out for those who those would believe. Jesus Christ is the shelter for any who will trust him. Just as the animals came uh, to the ark for salvation from the rising water, we can come to Christ for salvation from spiritual death and destruction. Romans 8 and 1. And from the eventual judgment which will come to this earth. 
See, eventually it's going to come. We are in perilous days right now. We don't know whether it's the end now or what, but it's so close to it. I mean, all the things that's happening, dictatorship trying to take over the United States, which we are the, we are the country that know God, live for God, worship God. Now, when evil can come into this United States and just take over and it become a dictatorship, now, you know we are in the last days. So, and we don't know how this election is going to come out. But it's going to come out the way God wanted to come out. But I want to help you to prepare yourself for however it comes out. Just remember, it's still in God's will. Just remember because Black Lives Matter is going to be on the line. It's still in God's will. This pandemic, can't nobody control that. That's definitely in God's will. So if one don't, if one of the three don't get you, one of them going, one of them going to have an effect on everyone's life. So I'm just hoping that this lesson will help you understand that we have to prepare our mind so that we can get past this and we can do it. We have the Holy Spirit to get past this. We have the Holy Spirit. He lives in us. But don't let flesh get the best of you and cause it to lose your, you lose your mind or don't know what to do, don't know where to turn because I know a lot of people getting kicked out of their homes, losing their jobs. But God is still on the throne. He's still in control. Like I said before, Satan has already been defeated. Christ, we just have to have faith and trust in Christ. Just like our forerunners did. In Hebrews uh, chapter 11, it talks about the faith walkers. How they held on to their faith and how they trusted God. This is what we got to do. We must do this. And I'm going to go to 1 Peter and read that. And uh, it's talking about the day of the Lord is coming. Number one says, this is my second letter to you. This is Peter talking. Dear friends, and in both of them, I have tried to uh, stimulate your whole, wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. Number two, number two says, I want you to remember the, what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Number three says, mostly important, I want you to remember you that in the last days, scoffing will come, mocking, mocking the truth and following their own desires. Number four, there will, they will say, what happened to the promise of Jesus is coming again? And that's Satan. That's Satan. That's those false prophets. From before the time of our ancestors, everything was were reminded the same since the, the, the world was first created. They deliberately forgot that God made the heavens long ago by the word of the command, of his command, and he brought the earth out from the waters and, and surrounded it with water. Then he used the waters to destroy the ancestors. No, the ancient world with a mighty flood. You see, this is what happened. I mean, we can talk about the old and the new. 
And we can find out the same thing. If God destroyed the earth, the, the flood of the earth the first time, and if he said he's going to destroy this time with fire, it's going to happen. We just have to prepare ourselves for it. But, boy, I got something to tell you tonight. God bless me, boy. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Number seven. And by the same word that, that by the same word, the present, present heavens and earth have been stored up. Stored up for fire. Mm. He already said in plan. It's already in motion. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. That's why he's going to destroy it again. The same way he destroyed it the first time, the same way he's going to destroy it again. And this time he had more people that knew him. More people, many, much more that knew him. And he still... have so many people in the world that's living like Satan, but yet calling themselves Christians of God. You're doing one thing, evil, then you do something good. You're straddling the fence, my brothers and sisters. I know because I've straddled the fence before. And when I got to know Jesus, really know him, I will not straddle that fence anymore. I won't live one way and do something bad today and do something good tomorrow and just say, Lord, forgive me. That's all I got to do. He'll forgive me if I repent. Then keep on doing the same, have the same desire to keep doing the same thing. No, I have to stop and say, Lord, take that desire from me. No, I want to live like you now. I want to have the desire to live righteous all the time. That's what I want, Father. Give it to me, Lord. I know I got to go through a lot, trials and tribulations, but give it to me. That's what I want, just like David. Test my heart. Test my mind, Lord. Test me. I truly want to be like you. And that's why he was the apple of God's eye. Because he wanted to be just like God. Amen. Um, number eight. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. And a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Isn't that something? Isn't that romantic? Oh, one day is like a thousand years. Wow. Think about that. One day, compared to us, is like a thousand years to the Lord. He in love, he's in love with us just that much. Just that much. His mind is always on us. That's love. That's real love. It's like a thousand years. A thousand years. A thousand years. That's a century. A thousand years. Mm, mm, mm. That's real love. And a thousand years is like a day. The number nine says, the Lord isn't really being slow about this promise. As, as soon as Oh, no, no, as some may think. No, he is being patient for you, for your sake. God is being patient for us, just like he did when he flooded the world. It was a thousand years. He gave those people a thousand years to do right. He gave them a century on until they do right, but they did not want to do right. He is being patient with them us, just like he was patient with them. 
And all he's asking us is to do right. That's what he told um, Cain, do right. That's all you, that's all I ask for you to do. Do just do right. That's all. And Cain, Cain got mad. Mm. He does not want anyone to, to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. See? Just repent. Wholeheartedly. Not just because or ha ha happily, but just repent wholeheartedly, truthfully in your heart. I repent. You know, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Number 10 says, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear with fire and the, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Everything on earth will be found. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything on earth this time is going to be found in judgment. You shall be judged on the last day. Whatever your desires were, they shall be judged. If you had a wrong desire and didn't want to change it, you shall be judged. If you had a desire that was godly and acceptable unto God, you will not be judged. You will not. You will enter the place where God wants you to go. And that's where I'm intending to go. That's what I'm working hard to do. I really want to get there. And number 11 says, since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live? Looking forward to the day of God, and hurrying it along. On the day he will sit in heaven, on, sit heaven on fire. And the elements will melt away in a flames. 13. But we are looking forward. This is the good part. It's getting ready to get real good now. We looking forward for this last day. Because just like he promised Abraham something, he promised us something. He promised us something. This is what we have to look forward to. We've had misery all our lives, ups and downs all our lives, sickness all our lives, being talked about, being ridiculed. A lot of them have died and gone on. The Christian body has had its turn of a lot of ups and downs. But those who endure to the end shall see God. I'm going to say it again, number 13. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. He has promised and, and a world filled with God's righteousness. You see what we got to look forward to? There's going to be a brand new heaven. There's going to be a brand new earth that God has built just for you. Just for you living right. Just for you living holy. This is his promise. This is where it gets good. This is where I really love it because he made it for us. If I had to go back into the Garden of Eden, this is what he did. This is what he did. I thought about it and God was showing me things about the first chapter of Genesis. He said, when I created man, I told him that he would be 
fruitful and populate the earth. That was right after he made man, Adam and Eve. But this is what he would do. This was before he even messed up. This is what you would do. And what authority you had over the earth, over the animals, over the, over the trees, over every living thing. You had authority over that. But this is what God has promised us, a new heaven and a new earth. And it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Watch this. Um, number 14. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to do, to make every effort to be found living peaceful, living that, no, lives that are pure and blameless. In his sight, all you got to do, that's what Noah did. He was blameless in God's sight. That's all he asked for. That's not too much to give. That's all you got to do. Live blameless. Live righteous. That's all you got to do. You're going to get a new heaven and a new earth. Brand new. Brand spanking new. That's God's promise. That's God's covenant that he made with Jesus Christ. That this is what his godly people will have. It's a promise. But just like in the garden, these things was promised to us in the garden. If Adam had ate of the tree of life, we would have had the new heaven and the new earth right then. We would have had that. And the same thing, the promise was still there. He still had to pro uh, uh, populate the earth. Who still would have been married, had wives, but doing godly things. <laughs> Righteous things only. This is what the new earth and new heaven have. We will live righteous all the time. Satan will be shut up and can't get out in the bottomless pit where he will go and stay forever. There will be, in the new heaven and new earth, there will be no more wrongdoing, no more evil. You don't even have to worry about thinking wrong, doing wrong. You can't do it because in, 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 in uh, 1 Corinthians said, he's going to give you a brand new body, an incorrupt body, a holy body. You don't have to worry about getting sick. You don't have to worry about having diabetes, headaches. No, you don't have to worry about nothing like that. You're just going to live peacefully with God. And guess what? He want to come down and live with us. Like he's always had, like he always wanted. When he was in the temple, when David, Solomon built the temple for, 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 for God. And he had to live in the Ark of the Covenant. His presence was there. His presence, he always wanted his presence to be with us, be with him, be with us. And we with him. But these are the things that we have to look forward to. He's going to turn right back around and give us what he promised in the tree of life. In the garden. When he promised that tree to, to Adam. It is promised to us now. Because we're eating of the tree right now. We're eating of Jesus Christ right now. Jesus Christ is the tree of life. We're eating him right now. And if we eat of him and do what's right and live righteous, we shall have that new heaven and that new earth. Whew, no. This is getting good. Number 15, and, and remember our Lord patience gives people time to be saved. 
God give us time to do what's right. He gives us time. You just got to get to work and start working on it. That's all you got to do. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Number 16, speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unable and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of the scriptures. And this will result in their destruction. You can twist the scriptures around if you want to fit your evil desires, false prophets, false teachers, false whoever you are. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because God sees everything, knows all. He sees what you're doing. He knows what you're doing. And he's going to put a stop to it too. So, if you're living as a false prophet or anybody else living falsely to God's word, turn and seek the truth of God's word. Turn before it's too late, my friends. You can do it. It's not worth it. As he destroyed the people in Noah's day, he's going to destroy the people in this day the same way, but by fire. And this is, we're going to talk about the defeat of Satan. Revelations 27 through 10. And it says, number, number seven says, when the thousand years come to the to an end, Satan will be Satan will be let out of his prison. Eight, he will go out to deceive the nations. Called God, Gog and Magog. That's his job. He's gonna get all his fellows up. And to try to see everybody that he can, because he know he only has such a he only has such a short time to do what he needs to do. His sign will be cut short. Even in every corner of the earth, he will gather them together for battle. And mighty army. As mem as numberless as stands, as stand as stand along with the seashore, as saw sand along the seashore. Number nine, and I saw them as they went up on the a board, plain of plain, plain, plain of the earth and surrounding God's people and the beloved city. But fire, ooh, look at here. Yeah, he brought, got his buddies together and went and do battle against God's people. But guess what happened? Thank you, Jesus. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking army and consumed them. Remember when John was talking? Him and James, that he wanted to bring fire down from heaven to destroy some people? Yeah, this is what God going to do. To the, to the Satan and all his cronies, demons that get together and try to go against God's people. He's going to put an end to it. He's going to put a stop to it. He told you he won't put no more on you than you can bear. And he means that. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the best and the false prophets. See, that's what's going to happen to the false prophets. They're going along with Satan too. Those ones that didn't teach the right thing, oh, they're going to. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's one place I don't want to go because I don't even like the heat now. I know I'm not going to like that heat down there. So I'm going to do everything I can to try to live right. That's what I'm going to do. I have to. 
I am called to God to do that. And number 21, 1 through 9. And this is talking about the new Jerusalem in Revelations. Number 1 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth has disappeared. And the, and the sea was also gone. Number two, and I saw the holy city, the holy city. This is the good part. This is the promise that God has given you. Take it. Live right. Live holy. Because this is his promise. The same promises that he made to Abraham. The same promises that he made to uh, 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 Jacob. The same promise that he made to Isaac which came through the bloodline, the same promise. This is still the promise to you. God will never break a promise. That's guaranteed. Because he made every promise that he made to you was made under a covenant. Under a covenant. And I saw, number two, I saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down from God's out of heaven, like a bride, beautiful, desired for her husband. Desired for her husband. That same tree of life in the garden is this new Jerusalem that he, that he had already planned for us in the garden if Adam had ate of that tree first. It was already planned out. Everything was pre-planned. Okay, but we messed. But we messed up. So God said, "Okay, you, you look. Even though you messed up, if you get it right, you're still gonna receive it." Have your mother, or father ever did that to you before? You know you messed up. You know you got a whooping. But guess what? They still gave it to you because of the love that they have for you. And this is the love that God has for us. He still want his, mm, thank you, Jesus. He still want his plan to go forth. His plan, you cannot stop God's plan. God is going to have a perfect city, um, perfect people living in his city, holy and acceptable, acceptable unto God. Those people will be in that city, the new Jerusalem. His plan still came true. It may have took a long road around to it, but it still came true. This is what I want to share with you. What you have, what you have to look forward to. This new Jerusalem that God has built for you, street paved with gold. He's going to send it down from heaven. God can do anything. If he can create an earth, he can send a city down and set it on, on earth. He can do anything. God is God. He's God. So this is what he has promised us. <clears throat> Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Beautiful. Desired for her husband. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, number 31. I told you this was going to be a good, this was going to be a, a hot one. This is a hot message to me because now I don't fear nothing because I know what the promise was to and for me and you. So I live for that promise now. I don't live for the world anymore. I live for the promise that he said that he was what he said he was going to give me if I live holy and righteous. Number three, I heard a loud sound from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. You see, oh God, mm -mm -mm. God's home which he's always wanted into the garden. He wanted his home with his people. That's all he ever wanted. He's going to get it. He 
He's going to get it. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. God himself is going to be in the presence of us. Number four, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. No more pain. No more sickness. No more death. Now you tell me that ain't worth living righteous for. That's worth living righteous. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. All these things are gonna go are gone forever. Mm. And the one sitting on the throne said, number five, look, I am making everything new. See? He, he making everything new now. Brand making new. New children, new house. <laughs> new children, new earth. New children, new heaven. <laughs> wow. Ain't God awesome. Ain't God awesome. And then he said to them, write this down. He was talking to John. Write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. He said, make no mistake about it. It's true. It's going to happen. Number six. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Maker. The beginning and the end. He said, it's finished. We haven't even seen it yet. And he said, it's finished. He has the last word. And the last say so. It's done. I'm the Alpha and the Maker. The beginning and the end. And it's finished. You see, it, it's finished. We don't have to worry no more. We don't have to worry about how we live in this life. Whether we're sick or when we're in trouble, when we're in jail, it doesn't matter. All we got to remember is when we get in trouble, whatever dire situation we fall in, that remember the promise of God, the new Jerusalem. He promised his people that, and you're going to get it. He said it's finished. Just like he built the world in seven days. I mean, six days, and on the seventh day he said, he rested, and he said, it's finished. After he done all that work, him and Jesus and the Holy Ghost, he said, it's finished. It's finished. When Jesus died on the cross for our sin, it's finished. It's a done deal. <laughs> it's finished. Woo. It's finished. It says, to all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. Everything free. We ain't got to pay no bills. We ain't got no rent. We ain't got no house mortgage. We got a house free, rent free, everything. We ain't got to worry about the plumbing messing up. We ain't got to worry about the term of my... Turn, turn mics tearing up the house. We ain't worried about no stuff like that. God got everything taken care of. Yeah, yeah, everything taken care of. Mm, mm, mm. Number seven says, all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. Oh, buddy. See? Let's catch to it now. All who are, all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. All who are, have victory in, over sin. When you, change, when you ask God to change you and you're sincere, you want to be just like him, you're victorious in Jesus Christ. Because only Jesus could do it. Only Jesus could do it. See, it's one thing about God. See, God was, 
in the body of Christ also. And I do believe he had to come down just to see what humans had to go through and live in a body to see what it felt like truly to have to put up with Satan all the time, ridiculing you, calling you the devil, like the Pharisee and Sadducee did. Trying to kill you. Trying to destroy everything you stood for. But through it all, all who are victorious, through it all, you know your life story better than I do. I just know my own. But through it all, you were victorious because you put all your trust and faith in God. And you know that's the only way you made it. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. You're victorious, he will be your God. And we will be his children. Yes. And a father takes care of his children. But there won't be no bad kids no more. No, there will be only good children. Knowing good and good only. If she, if Eve had ate of the tree of life, she will only have known good. She will only have known the good things of God and not the bad things of the devil. That's the consequence that you pay for when you do what's wrong. But number eight, This one, this is this verse is just letting you know who you are. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, immorals, those uh, those who practice witchcraft, idols, worshiping, and all liars, their faith is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Number nine. I mean, God puts it right on the line. He tell you what you got to do to live right, and he tell you where you are. If those, if you find yourself in these shoes, I'd get rid of them real fast, real fast, and start picking up the fruits of the spirit. Long, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, self-control, patience, goodness, gladness. Pick up those things. Uh, we're going to go to Romans 8. Uh, I'm saying one through eight, but I'm going to cut it short and I'm going to go to six. Uh, Romans eight and six says, so little, uh, so let, let your sinful nature control your mind. Don't let your sinful soul control your mind that lead to death. But letting the spirit control your mind, leading to life and peace. That's the conclusion of this. Chapter 9. Let the Holy Spirit control your mind. That leads to peace. And this I thank you for listening to the word of God. Which God has given me to give you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Until we see each other again. God bless and I love you.